Gail Trotter is in the studio with me, an attorney, writer, senior fellow with the Independent Women's Forum. IWF.org is that website. Her website, Gail, G-A-Y-L-E, Trotter, T-R-O-T-T-E-R.com. And Gail recently wrote a piece that was published in The Hill titled, In the Senate, Campaign Finance is the New Flag Burning. Gail, welcome back to the program, first Thank of all. Thank you so much for having me, Tom. Nice to, nice to have you here with us. Tell us your, your take on this. Lay out your argument. Yes, I'm very interested in this because I've been following this issue for a while. And you and I talked about this a little bit before the show started, that this really goes back to the case in 1989, Texas v. Johnson, where the Supreme Court took up the issue of flag burning. And for many conservatives and many Americans of all political parties, the idea of burning the flag just creates this emotive reaction to seeing our flag burning. And so there was a strong effort There were 48 states at that time that criminalized the act of burning the flag. And in this situation, a man burned a flag outside of the 1984 Republican convention, and he was prosecuted under the law. And it it was taken all the way up to the Supreme Court. And surprisingly, the Supreme Court struck down the laws of 48 states that banned flag burning. They said that this man was protected under the First Amendment for this conduct, which essentially was political expression. Yeah, it's not unlike in some ways the Nazis in Skokie back in the 60s. Um, yes, which the ACLU uh, supported yeah. their right to protest right. and to march. And did. So, so the essence of your argument is that if we all agree, and, and we're assuming, I suppose, that we all agree with the Supreme Court, which is often shaky territory, uh, an area where Mike Huckabee and, and Newt Gingrich and I and Phyllis Schlafly all agree, Oddly enough. Um, It's a good issue, then. It is. Uh, But if you're assuming that the Supreme Court, in saying that flag burning is speech, is right, and I I agree with that decision. I I disagree with judicial supremacy (laughs) and judicial review, but I agree with that decision. Um, You're saying then spending money, since flag burning is a behavior, and it's been interpreted as speech, that spending money, which is a behavior that up until 1976 and the, the, the... Buckley. Buckley case, yes, uh, was regulated from the founding of our republic until 1976. And it's still regulated. The spend, it is, to, to, but it's been deregulated pretty massively by Citizens United. But you're, you're asserting that spending money is equally speech to flag burning. That, that's the, the equation that you're trying to draw here. I'm talking about political gestures. Right. So we had the case in 1989 where the Supreme Court decided that flag burning was protected under the First Amendment. Right. And that was an unpopular political that was an unpopular decision by the Supreme Court that generated a political response by Republicans on Capitol Hill, by senators and congressmen who had a flag burning amendment to the right. Constitution. To get around the Supreme Court. Yes, yeah. because they wanted to overturn this very upsetting decision to them. And my understanding reading your book is that Citizens United was a similarly upsetting decision to you on a principled basis, and you would like to see that overturned. So my argument is that, like the flag-burning case, there are these decisions where the Supreme Court protects political expression that goes against feelings that many of us have about what is right and what is American and what are the things that should be protected in our culture. I absolutely agree, if we're talking about political expression. But money is different than flags. If I burn a flag, I am not gaining or losing political power as a consequence of that. I'm not ending up owning a politician or being able to flip legislation as a consequence of that. I might have some small impact on public opinion. It'll probably be a negative impact. On the other hand, if I spend a million dollars, if I if I walk into Mitch McConnell's office and say, I'm going to put a million dollars into your campaign. But that's I'm- not what Citizens United allows. Let me just interrupt for a minute. It's independent expenditures. You can't walk into Mitch McConnell's office and say, here's a million dollars for your campaign. That limitation was reserved. Let's say that that I walk into Kentucky and I drop a million dollars in in television ads. Like Bloomberg on the gun issue. Exactly. Yes. I I am opposed to this on both sides. That are supportive of Mitch McConnell or supportive of Allison Lundgren Grimes. Right, right. I am using money as power, as political power. And money as power is a whole different thing than flag burning as speech. See, this is the essential difference between your worldview and my worldview. You look at this as money as power. 
I look at it as the marketplace of ideas. So if we How have is money problems, not power? if we have problems with speech, the answer to that is more speech. And if you look at the discussion in this in the Citizens United case, where the Supreme Court majority opinion goes into this, they say that all of the the participation in our politics comes from money that is gained from participation in our marketplace, in the economy. So if you're banning people from corporations being able to be part of the political political expression, you're locking down the diversity of viewpoints that free people in America need to have access to to make informed political decisions. Well, that was, that was the argument that the majority made was, in essence, was that it wasn't that corporations should have freedom of speech. It was that we should have the freedom to listen. And yes, that that's because, a piece of free speech. But read the dissent. Read Stevens's dissent. I mean, th- that dissent was blistering. And 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 I don't think most people believe that. I think most people get it that money is power. That that if if a billionaire is coming after you, duck. I mean, you know, it's it's. But look at Bloomberg in Colorado. He put a lot of money into Colorado, and those two state senators who were opposed to Second Amendment rights, they were recalled. He was putting money into Colorado to oppose their recall, and he lost. So money, a lot of money, doesn't. Well, not necessarily, because a lot of money in that case was brought in by the NRA. I mean, oh, that, nothing, nothing to the effect, to the extent of Mike, of Mayor Bloomberg. Okay, then you are, and you could do it just as easily with with uh, the senatorial candidate and the gubernatorial candidate, whose names uh, are escaping me in California. Oh, California. No, back, you know, oh. uh, uh, Carly Fiorina and Meg Whitman, I think. Yes, yeah. yes, uh, yes. Who both tried to buy their elections. They were billionaires, and they both went in and said, you know, we're going to And there are uh, examples on both dollars. sides. All right. It's but, the ideas but what that I would matter. submit to you, Gail, is that those are the exceptions that prove the rule. The vast majority of the time, the candidate who has the most money spent on their behalf, or directly or indirectly, and I think you have to aggregate the two, is going to win. There's a reason why, why Procter & Gamble spends money on advertising. It works. I have two responses to that. First is you're, you want to look at who are the rich and powerful in our country and who controls those institutions. Look at the national uh, institutions that have the most power in the political conversation. They're universities. They're news organizations like CNN. They are magazines. They are movie studios. They are museums that are controlled by people who have a political agenda. And I don't object to that. I What I object to is trying to tamp down the marketplace of ideas. So I, if I these, disagree these with your speech, your major political we should players, talk Gail. more. Oh, that is, and, that is and, naive and, and to think that, that they that, are not and to major say that, political and players. To say, well, and, and, you know, the entire media of the United States, 90% of all the media that Americans read, listen to, uh, or watch, is controlled by six corporations. There's a very heavy corporate bias in the corporate media for, in the United States. They are for-profit corporations. Yes. CNN going out there, having a documentary before a, an election, that's and a this is why this is why issues like uh, so-called free trade, issues like, well, Citizens United, the stuff that we're talking about right now, um, issues like uh, net neutrality will not be discussed in the corporate media because the corporate media owns the owns the media. But that's a, that's a whole other argument. Um, I mean, that's an argument in favor of uh, reversing Reagan's 82 decision not to enforce the Sherman Antitrust Act any further and allow that's, for these giant That is off the topic because we are trying to focus on the purpose of the First Amendment, okay. which the First Amendment said Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. Right. And at the core of the First Amendment is the protection of political expression because in a democracy, it's all about the political process. The Constitution sets up the order of the political process, and it preserves the right of the citizen the to be solution, informed to you know, make the, decisions. The, the five justices who ruled in Citizens United to say money is speech also said, and uh, Kennedy, in, in his opinion, um, went through this whole long thing about how, and the solution to this is transparency. We've had no transparency. The Republicans have filibustered efforts for transparency. There I think are it's, efforts. There are there is transparency. If you go back to Buckley, there were requirements that were upheld in Buckley that required disclosure. If any and now they amounts figured out were, a ways around. No, if any amount is given to the candidate, they have to disclose it. But there are problems with that too. I think that's problematic. Okay. This is the Tom Hartman program. Gail Trotter, G A Y L E T R O T T E R dot com and I W F, a senior fellow of the Independent Women's Forum. Thank you, Gail. Thank you. It's nice.